Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here, and today I want to help you travel smarter by solving a common problem that you, me, most people around the world have, that's managing your passwords online. So there are basically four different types of people. There are people that don't know their passwords. There are people whose parents don't know their passwords and always ask them to reset their passwords. And there are people that know their passwords, but know that their passwords are pretty terrible. And then there's this small little group of people that uses password managers. And that's what I want to talk about with you today. So aside from just generally crappy passwords that most people have, a thing that you might do, hopefully not, but a lot of people do, is they use the same password across all of their accounts. So that means if I hack your Facebook account, I'm going to try to use that password across all of your other accounts. I'm going to try your bank account, your email address, so on. And if I can get into all those accounts, then you're going to be pretty much owned. And the thing about that is if you use the same password or a password that's basically like password one, password two, passwords that are very similar across all of your accounts, you're just really setting yourself up to be in a really bad situation. You don't ever want to go through a situation where all of your accounts are hacked, especially if you're traveling on the road, that can just be a nightmare. It can lock you out of your money. It can lock you out of your access to communication. It can really, really slow you down no matter what you're doing. So the best way to go about this is to do what people do very well and let the computers do what they do very well. And what I mean by that is people are really good at authentication with other people face to face. You never misrecognize your friends. You never misrecognize your family. Yeah, sure. They might be cyborgs that were taken over and replaced by aliens that look and talk identically to the people that you know, but probably not. In other words, what I'm saying is we're really good at authenticating people face to face and making that kind of authentication. But when it comes to being online, that's a lot more difficult. So a machine having to authenticate us or us to authenticate ourselves to a machine is a much more difficult process. It really relies a lot on account passwords and account usernames. So you've got these two things which gives you access to any of your accounts. If I'm your email provider, if I have your username and password, I'm probably going to let you into the account because I'm a computer and I don't know any better. So one of the ways to get around this problem is to do what you're good at, which is remembering like one password. You know you're good at that. And letting a computer manage all the other passwords that you have for accounts without you having to worry about thinking about it. That's why you want to use a password manager. And basically what a password manager is, is it's sort of like a vault for all of your passwords. And you only need to remember one key to get into that vault. And then you just let the machine do the rest. Today, I want to focus specifically on NordPass, which you might know from such VPNs as NordVPN. They make a password manager called NordPass, which works online and locally on your machine, and it helps you manage all of your passwords. Like I mentioned, basically, you just need to know one password to get into your NordPass account, and then it's got all your passwords stored for you. Now, it's not just storing all of your passwords. You can set it up to generate random passwords for each of your accounts, and you don't have to remember those passwords. You just go into your NordPass account and then you just click copy. It will copy that password, that random password that you don't even know what it is. And you can just copy and paste it when you're logging into your various accounts. NordPass also has this feature where it will autofill passwords for you in your browser. And it'll even have this little meter that will show you how random and complex that password is. And you can even test your own passwords to see how good or good they aren't. The passwords that you made up before you started using something like NordPass. And you can even set NordPass up to use two-factor authentication, which you absolutely should. There's no reason why you shouldn't. It's either going to text you or email you a six-digit code, which you then use to log in, which means if somebody steals your NordPass password, they still can't get into your account unless they have access to your email address, which they won't because they don't have your email password because you didn't use the password for your email address for everything else. Your NordPass password is different than your email password. Do you, you see where I'm going with this? So once you have two-factor authentication set up, you can do a lot of cool things with NordPass. You can share passwords with other NordPass users securely. Like if you want to share your Netflix account with other people, you want to send that password securely, you can easily do that to other NordPass users. You can even see who you've shared your passwords with and then revoke that access later if you want to. If, like if you get pissed off at your brother and you don't want to let them have access to your Netflix account, well, you can just revoke that password privilege. NordPass's interface is really straightforward. It's really easy to use. Now, there are a whole bunch of different password managers online that are work offline or that are free, and I'm going to get to the price in a minute. But the free ones generally require more work from you to do things that humans aren't really good at. 
I use a couple of different password managers. I use one that's offline, I use one that's free, but it requires a lot of input from me to use it. I can't share passwords securely. I've got to manage all the passwords myself. It doesn't do autofill for browser logins and things like that. So it requires a little bit more user input. If you're the type of person that doesn't want to deal with like any of that stuff, like you don't want to like worry about managing another program in your life or you just hate computers or you just hate all this authentication stuff, then you want to use something that's a little bit easier to use like NordPass. NordPass also has a couple of other features which are really helpful, like you can store credit cards in there, you can store your credit card information. So when you go to buy something online, you don't always have to like get in your wallet and look up the credit card number and all that stuff. You can just copy and paste it from NordPass. Now, like a VPN, when it comes to a password manager, you're really putting all of your trust in that password manager provider. Like a VPN, you're putting a lot of trust in that VPN to not snoop on your traffic. It's protecting you from everybody else, but now you got to worry about this company. What are they doing? How are they managing these passwords? How are they transmitting it? So here's a little bit more about NordPass's security. It is closed source, which means that the code that's used to develop it is not open to the public. So it doesn't get this public scrutiny to look for security flaws and things like that. But they recently went through a thorough audit by Cure53, which is a German company which specializes in doing security audits. They released a synopsis of the report online, so you can read that from NordPass's website and see the conclusions they came to. They let the NordPass developers know about critical issues they found, which have since then been fixed by the development team. So having this audit in place and having this audit synopsis there where you can see what was checked, how it was checked, and what kind of response they got from NordPass is important. That gives you an idea of the kind of security that you have in the application, but it also gives you confidence that they've been thoroughly checked, at least by an independent third party, which specializes in doing security audits. We know that when you connect to NordPass, that connection is encrypted. So all the information that's going back and forth between your computer and NordPass is encrypted. They also claim to have a zero knowledge framework, which basically means that the encryption that they use to store your passwords at NordPass, so on their servers, is encrypted in a way that the developers over at NordPass can't access the information. They don't have access to your password. They don't have access to a secret key or a special key that can unlock your password vault. So your passwords are protected even from NordPass themselves. Overall, NordPass is a pretty solid password manager. They do take your IP address and they do take some other information related to advertising. So you want to take a look at their privacy policy and NordPass and NordVPN are all based in Panama. So it's out of the jurisdiction of a lot of different governments, which is something that privacy advocates and people who are privacy conscious look for. So that's another benefit for NordPass. There are a couple of different tiers of NordPass. There's a free version, which essentially just lets you use NordPass on one device. So you set it up, let's say on your laptop or on your phone, but you can't sync that across all of your devices. But if you get their paid plan, which is $249 for two years, it basically comes out to $53 for two whole years. You can then sync that account across your iOS or Android devices, your laptop on multiple devices. So that way, if you wanna log into something from your phone or your laptop, doesn't matter. You can just log into NordPass on those devices and just get into your accounts rather than having to copy from your laptop to your phone, basically becomes more cumbersome and it's gonna save you a lot of hassle from your accounts getting hacked. It's gonna be a major security upgrade, I know for a lot of you, so it's something to well worth considering. Like I mentioned, there are free alternatives that can do most of the things that NordPass can do, but generally those are local, so they stay on your device. There's no offline version, so you can't sync it across multiple devices without using some manual plugging in and some manual syncing and all that stuff, which a lot of people, just most people don't want to mess with. But also with the password manager, unless you're sure you're using a very reliable password manager or it works completely offline and you're sure about that, then you don't want to just grab any old password manager off the internet that's free. You want to make sure that you're using a couple of good ones and NordPass has a lot of evidence to show that it's checked a lot of boxes in terms of security and it can help you manage your passwords. I'm going to leave a link to NordPass down in the comments below and right now it's 50% off if you want to check it out. This is not an ad, it's just a service that I tried and I wanted to review it for you. I'll also leave a link to some of the free options that I mentioned if you want to check those out. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. And while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. It's for you and a variety of
customize this feature where it will auto for you and across browsers this feature where it will allow you 